Okay, is everybody ready to get started? Hallelujah. I tell you, without these chairs in here, it sounds different. Yeah. It does. It makes a difference. The sound, the chairs take that the sound kind of quiet things down. Oh, praise the Lord. We still got a, a bunch coming in. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. All the time. All the time. God is good. I can't say nothing about y'all. It's time y'all early. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's good. I, I, I'm looking at my watch. We still, y'all still got two or three minutes. Yeah. I, I, yes. I, I feel like I don't have to look over here now and go over there. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's get started. Everybody ready to get started? Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Lord in prayer before we even start. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this wonderful day and bless this week. We even thank you for the rain, Lord. You know what we need when we need it. And we give you the praise of the Lord. I thank you for everyone that's here tonight, Lord. I pray blessings upon them. I pray that every ear, heart, mind is open to hear your word. It's all from the Holy Spirit, Lord. I just pray, dear Lord, that they, each person takes it the way they need it. That God wants them to have it. And they'll, they'll go and do what God wants them to do with it. God, I me behind the cross. Let it be all about you. And God, we give you all the praise and glory. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, good God to be here. Now, glad to be here even though it's raining, huh? I'm excited to be here. Praise the Lord. I mean, what better place to be? Because when you're with God's people, Holy Spirit's right here with us all the time. Amen. All the time. It's good. You know, God, uh, I, I was trying to figure out what God wanted me to bring tonight. And I've been talking a whole lot at, at different times I've preached about faith. And God laid on my heart tonight about, if you look what I've got going up there, true faith requires action and obedience. Amen. You know, a lot of times as Christians, we want to do what God tells us to do, but we just want to stand there and let God do it all. I, I, I'm serious. We want to stand there and let God do it all. But God tells us, I'm going to show you in Scripture, that God tells us that we've got to act on it and we've got to do the work. We've got to do the work. You know, I, I preached this, Pastor, you know yourself, that I said this not too long ago. If we want to be healed, if we truly believe that Jesus died on that cross, and with this strife that we are healed, if we truly believe that, then we got to do what God tells us to do. We got to do what God tells us to do. We got to. We got to do what God tells us to do. If, if, we, if we don't, guess what? Amen. Here, take this. I'm serious, brother. I'm as serious as I can be. You can preach. I, you know, I told you what God laid on my heart. 
True faith requires action and obedience. Look at the kind of different things. I, I look at our church, Pastor, because our church, honestly, I can lift brag on Open Arms Church. It's the people. It's not the building. It's the people. Amen. Because, you see, people help each other out. Amen. If you look through all this up there, and we got it, you know, people's heaven, people's praying for one another. You know, and I want to take this time. I just, this God, just, Holy Spirit just touched my mind. Of course, Charlotte had to go to the mercy room. Some of you got the, the prayer. Uh, she's in a lot of pain, so she said, St. Joe. Well, that was at 2.45 or something like that. I just talked to her at 5.30 or on text. We texted each other. I texted her and she's doing at 5.30. She still hasn't seen the doctor. She's still sitting in the waiting room waiting to see the doctor. In so much pain, and she's got the shake. So I told him that we would take time just to pray. So, yes. Uh, I'm going to ask you to stand up. And PJ, if you don't mind, I just feel like you need to pray for us. Hallelujah. that I was in church. So at, at the age of eight or nine, I knew who Jesus was. I, I did. I had accepted him in my heart, but I knew who he was. So I was praying at eight years old, and I think I've shared this before as a priest that I had a little chihuahua dog, and I prayed for that little chihuahua dog, and that little dog lived to be 18 years old. Which was, and, and, I mean, I did. I prayed. When I was eight years old, I prayed. I was already married, when that dog, when my little chihuahua dog passed away, died. So I prayed at eight, nine years old, but I still didn't know who Jesus was. I heard the word. See what it says up there? I heard, I was in church. I heard the word. And I heard, I was in Bible school. I was in Sunday school. And I was in church. So I heard the word everywhere I went. And that's what God's telling us. You need to hear the word. But when I'm at the age of 13 years old, there was a Vances came to preach a revival at our church at, at Springfield Baptist Church. And I sat there and I listened to him preach on hell at 13 years old. I knew who Jesus was at 8, 9, 10 years old. I knew who Jesus was. But I heard this amazing God-led person. I'm not lifting the person up as much as I'm lifting God up. But I heard this evangelist preach on hell. And if you didn't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's where you would wind up. Yeah. And I knew at 13, I didn't want that. And I couldn't wait to the invitation that night. And the minute they gave the invitation, I, I, I was at a, at a quick walk, almost a run, get down there and tell the pastor, I want Jesus in my life. Hey. And that was 13 years old. But, but I say all that to say this, that if my mom and dad had me in church and I didn't hear the word pastor, I wouldn't have got saved at 13 years old. So it, listen to me. It's up to us Christians to make sure the ones out there that don't know Jesus, hears the word. So we've got to step out in faith. We've got to, have, we've got to do that work, pastor. We've got to do the action part. For somebody else to get saved. See, we get saved, we're fine, we're good, and we're saved. I just don't go to church every Sunday and Wednesday, listen to the preacher preach, I'm gone. That's not the job. 
The job is, as Christians, to do the work that God's called us to do, to have the faith to know that we can reach someone that's lost and going to hell out there. And that's what we need to do. He's got one. It's not just being a pastor. It's not just the elders and deacons. It's everybody that knows Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. I'm talking to all of us. I'm not leaving a person out that's here tonight or that's watching that knows Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Because we all have a job to do. And if we don't do it, it's not going to get done. It's not going to get done. So, so their faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And that is His Bible also. That's the Word that God gives us. That's where we learn it from. So we need to, we need to speak it, but we need to get into the Word and learn how to speak it. Because see, sometimes, Pastor, you know yourself, and I know myself too, sometimes... As Christian people, we might lead somebody down the wrong way. If, if we, we read that word and we don't understand it, we might say something that offends them in a way that you'll never reach them. So we got to be careful and make sure we get in the word and, and understand the word and, and listen to the ones. That, it's Jesus, but Jesus is dead. So you can have all the faith you want. You know that whatever, that, all right, let's go this way. You know that Jesus Christ died on the cross as a Christian. And you know that you accepted that. And you know with his stripes, you are healed. You know that. But when you get up in the morning and you say, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting. And, but yet, you ask God and believe that the faith of, of your, your heart and the way you believe in Jesus, that he's already healed you. Why don't you get up? Oh, praise the Lord, I feel good. I mean, seriously, I feel good. I don't care if it hurts. I don't it, it takes the work. It takes the obedience. That's what the title of it was. It takes the faith. It takes the work. It takes the obedience to, to claim and do that. Don't, let, don't, don't be negative about nothing. I want you to show me a scripture where Jesus was negative. Anywhere you want to show me. You won't find it, Pastor. There's no place in the God's word that Jesus was negative. He was positive about everything. And he says, I'm going to do this for you, so are you going to be positive about it? See, there's so many people right now, there's so many people right now, I'm going to say this, there's so many Christian people right now that's, that's having a lot of issues. No, I'm serious. I'm sick of Satan attacking Christian people. I'm sick of it. Well, what do we do with it? What do we do about it? We got to get back to giving the action and the work back in the faith. We got to get back doing what we're supposed to do, church. We can't just think it. We got to work it. We got to do it because it just says right there. But without no old man, that faith without works is dead. So you can have all the faith you want, but if you're not working to do what you're supposed to do, it's dead. It's not going to amount to nothing. You're not going to get the healing. You're not going to get it. You know, I listen to pastors talk about, I think it was this past Sunday, but talk about some issues that you had health wise. Until Jesus got a hold of you, until the Holy Spirit showed you, but you still had to do something, didn't you? You still had to do a work. You might, listen, let me say this. I, I, I'm going to hurt some people because, man, Jesus. I mean, Holy Spirit just spanked me so much this week because I tell you why. There was something in my life that I wanted, I needed to get rid of because this is God's temple. Holy Spirit lives in here, Pastor. You preach it, I preach it, and He does. The Word says it. Jesus tells us. Holy Spirit lives in the ministry. Said Jesus, ask Jesus in your heart. Holy Spirit come to live in here. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one, and they live here. They live here. So what are we doing to hurt this temple? Now listen, I'm not going to pick out one particular thing. God will show you, Holy Spirit will show each and every morning, like He showed me two days ago when I was preparing, working on this, what He showed me I need to do to take better care of this temple. So right now, Holy Spirit just told me, He is touching different people's hearts and minds right now. Because each and every one of us has got something that we're not doing right to this temple. Something. And Jesus says, all you got to do is to really realize that with those stripes, I healed you. Now, 
What are you going to do about it? Are you going to give up something that you're putting in this body that's not right? Whether it's spiritually or whether it's physically. Amen. There's something right now that every one of us got to make a choice to do. Amen. There's a lot of people sitting there thinking right now, God just showed it to me, Pastor. So you'll have to take it up with the Holy Spirit because what you can fuss with me, this not going to matter. But in 10 years, if Jesus don't come back, in 10 years, there's going to be some issues and some health of your bodies. And the Holy Spirit can show it to me. There's going to be some issues. If you don't stop doing some things, whether it's eating, drinking, I don't know. God will show you. He showed me. But in 10 years, we're going to have issues. And we're going to say, why God, I come to church every Sunday. Why God, I've done this. Why God, I believe in you. Why God, I accepted Jesus Christ in my, in my life. Why? And he's going to say, because you did not take care of your temple. It was a choice you made. It was a choice I made. I didn't want to give up something that was good at a particular time. But as I get older, consequences will happen. Will happen. So, Pastor had to give up something. He did. Holy Spirit done told me. He had to give up something. John Russell has to give up something. If I want good health in my body. I have to give up something. Because sometimes, listen to me, sometimes it's hard to give up something that, that's fun. Sometimes it's hard to give up something that's fun, that you enjoy, that you do every day. Because I had a question, I said, man, I, I don't understand that. I, I'm not that bad person. I don't do that. But you're not listening to me. That's what he told me. You're not listening to me. I live inside you, John. I live inside you. You're supposed to respect me. You're supposed to take and put in your mouth things that's good for you. So I can live there and honor you and glorify you and give you the glory. I want everybody in this church healed physically, spiritually, everything. I want it all healed. I want John Russell to be healed of everything. And he says, I, I've done, done that, John. I've done healed you. Now, now, I want you to step out in faith and start doing better for yourself. It's so simple. The world out here, church, the world gives you everything out here. You can turn on TV and look at all this good stuff. Then, well, you take this in. You go in. This is so easy. This won't hurt you. Go to God and ask Him, will it hurt you? Don't listen to TV. Don't listen to the radio. Don't listen to man. Unless they're preaching the word straight out of the word. Amen. I'm showing the scripture. James 2 23 says, And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. I want you to look at that just a minute. <clears throat> How many of us can really say, since we accepted Jesus Christ in our hearts as our Lord and Savior? Can we say that we're the friend of Jesus? Now think about it. I'm, I'm hoping you can. Are we the friend of Jesus? Abraham, in that scripture right there, he, he could say it. he was the friend of God. God showed through Abraham how many of us, think about that, how many of us gave our son on sacrifice? Huh? I couldn't. I'm going to find out and tell you. I couldn't take my boy or my two girls up there and put them on a, a thing, a, a, a bunch of wood, tie it down, and sacrifice it. But Abraham couldn't, do you know why? Listen, I'm going to say this before I get too far ahead of myself. I've heard two or three people, this in the last little bit, Pastor, say they, they would love to live back in the Old Testament. I wouldn't even want to be back in the old place. I wouldn't even want to. There's no way. Because let me tell you about God. Our God. Our Father. When He spanked back in the Old Testament, it wiped you out. You've done something wrong. Boosh. You was out. Thank God He sent His Son. For the new covenant. 
to take care of what all that God would have done and to us if he was here today. Could you imagine? It wouldn't matter. COVID wouldn't be nothing. It wouldn't be nothing. It wouldn't. So I look at Abraham. I think about the faith that Abraham had and what he did with the son that he listened to God and God says, I want you to take him and, and, and build a fire, go on top of the mountain, and I want you to, to tie him down. I want you to take a knife. I want you to, I want you to kill him and sacrifice him. How far did Abraham go? Everybody knows the story. Huh? Everybody show me how far. Come on, everybody show me. He went all the way. He went all the way. How much faith is that? And, and let, me, let me say this. How much work was it? Yes. And, and, but, but the thing about it, how far did he go? If God hadn't stopped him, what would have happened? He would have killed his son. If the angel of God hadn't come down and said stop, he would have killed his son. He would have sacrificed him. Why? Because he was obedient. Thank you. He was obedient. What I what, what our title was, he was obedient in faith. He knew that whatever God told him he was going to do. So I'm going to back up just a minute. We're, we're in New Testament now. We're, in, we're here. Jesus done died for all of us. He done, done took care of all that. He's done with his strife we are healed. And all Jesus tells us to do is step out in faith and take care of this temple. Amen. Are we doing it? Are we doing it? And the scripture was fulfilled which said Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Are we the friend of Jesus? Amen. This is the new covenant now. The old covenant took care of. It's washed away. It's, it's, we, we read the stories just to, to grow us. But Jesus came and took care of everything. But he says, we've got to do our part. We've got to do the work. And, and our job is to win the lost people out there. But how can we win the lost people out there when we're not taking care of ourselves? How can I go around and tell somebody, you're going to be healed and I'm going to have sick? I'm in a camp pastor. Or if I got something wrong with me, how am I going to go and lay hands on somebody and I need hands laid on me? Amen. So we got to be careful to do what God's called us to do, church. Amen. Are we doing it? That's the question. Are we doing it? I love it. Listen to me. This church, it, it just it just touches my heart with people in it. I'm serious. I'm not saying that to, because you're here or somebody else. I'm just, I tell this to Jesus when I'm praying. I thank God for opening our church to people in it. Because, listen, I know you pray. I know that you care. I know that you, you're, you're excited for Jesus. You worship Him. I see Him. I know your hearts. But the thing that, that, that's hurting me right now, are we taking care of them? Huh? See, nobody's raising your hand. I don't want you to. But are we truly take care of our bodies? Are we, because if our bodies is not right, our spirit cannot be right. Because he lives in here. And he says, if you're going to do everything that I've called you to do, then take care of the temple so I can use you to do greater and better things than Jesus did. Amen. And if we can't do that, then we can't do greater than Jesus did. Because we're not able. We're not able. See, we're letting Satan attack us too much. Because we are. We're letting Satan rule us. Stop him. Stop him. I'm serious. Stop him. He has no authority. It's all authority he has is what y'all give him. Or what I give him. Don't give him none. So just remember, there's something that the Holy Spirit's telling you. You're going to have to give up tonight. It's not easy. It's not, Pastor. You know, I know. It's not easy. Because you enjoy doing some things. It's not easy. <clears throat> James 2, 24. You see then how that by works that man is justified and not by faith only. So in other words, again, it takes works. 
Not with faith only. It takes work. You've got to be, you got to do something. You've got to step out and do something. You've got to work for it. You got to, what did Jesus do? He went to the cross. Amen. He even carried his cross so much, so far. For you, for me. And what else did he do? He took all our sins. Amen. Did he work? My goodness. How much more work does he need to do? He took all our sins. Listen, he literally went to hell so we didn't have to. Amen. How much more work does he have to do? Amen. How much more work? So, what's a little work going to hurt us? Amen. If Jesus did what he did, why can't we do the little simple things that he tells us to do in the Word? Why can't we? Because we're living in a fallen world and we let the world tell us what to do. When we should be telling the world what to do Amen. as Christians. Don't listen to Satan. Get rid of him. Back him out. Get him in a corner. Yes, get him in a corner. My goodness, y'all. A lot of us will fight for a piece of baloney. And we can't fight Satan over a, a Christian person that's going to hell or a person that's going to hell to get him to be a Christian. Let's stand up and fight. Amen. Pastor, priest, and Sunday, men, what are we doing? Ladies, what are we doing? Are we just sitting here waiting for the trumpet to sound? And God says, labor's for you. We gotta do work. We gotta get up and do work. I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking at all of it. I'm not looking at cross side like Pastor does. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Every one of us. If I had a mirror, I'd look at myself. Because I need it worse than you all. James 2, 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So there you go. Faith ain't going to amount to nothing. That little mustard seed that PJ gave me is not going to amount to nothing if I don't have the work to go with it. Faith is dead if we don't do the work. we got to step up and do the work. It's not going to hurt us to work. Every one of us does physically work. We all got jobs, most of us. We all do something. What about our spiritual work? Right, Pastor? What about our spiritual work? Are we spiritually working? Are we doing what God's called us to do? If we're not, then it's dead. Our faith don't mean to nothing. I can't lay hands on nobody and heal you. We got to be careful. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Often that he didn't leave nothing out. I really believe that everybody in here right now can be healed. I, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you got. I believe in the name of Jesus and I pray right now in Jesus' name, God. I pray to you, Holy Spirit, that every, reach around and touch every person that's got something going on in their body. I pray for healing right now. I pray, dear God, that you, I rebuke Satan out of this building. I pray, dear God, that Satan has no authority whatsoever. Jesus, you have died on that cross for our sins. And you said, with your stripes, we are healed. So at this moment, at this very moment, I pray in Jesus' name, we accept that. We are all healed. And we're going to claim it. And we're going to change our hearts and our minds to take care of this temple. Right this moment, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank God for the Lord. I'm telling you, church, there was some healing right now. I felt it. I felt it just like, whew. I hope and pray that y'all felt the spirit that I felt right now. Because there was healing right now. Now, now listen to me. I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to say, "Look at me." It's not. I wish I could have. I'd give anything if I had a piece of plywood over me right now. I would. But listen to me. You've got to make a choice to do something tonight. Yes. You've got to give up whatever that situation in your body is that you've been putting in it, whether it's with your eyes or with your mouth. You need to give it up tonight if you want to keep that healing that Jesus promised you. Amen? Amen? Everybody agree with me? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance 
of things hoped for. How many has hope? Hallelujah. Huh? Praise the Lord. How many has hope that Jesus will be back here soon? Hey. Huh? How many has hope that Jesus, before he comes back, is going to heal this land? Huh? How many has hope when he heals this land, the coronavirus is going to be gone? Huh? So we got hands that are still up everywhere. All right, if we got that hope, let's read a little bit further. The evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. All right, I want you to think about this just a minute. How many truly believe that God spoke this world into existence? Amen. Huh? Because we got to start, listen, that's what the Old Testament's all about. We got to start back at the book of Genesis. Amen. That's where it started. So God spoke this world into existence. Now, if we don't believe that, then we don't believe nothing else in the Bible. It's all, the rest of it's done. Just don't, don't read no further. It's not going to do you a bit of good. Just shut the book up. Go on back to life. So God spoke this into existence. And the minute he spoke it into existence and he, he created man. And man, which was Adam and Eve, he, he loved them, he cherished them. Now, you know, I had this question asked to me. Pastor, the other day, I might a couple weeks ago, I'm not sure. I'm see, I'm trying to think exactly how the person asked me. If uh, Holy Spirit, I don't want to say it wrong, but if I do, I'll get y'all confused. Let me come back on it because it's about Adam and Eve, and I want to—I want Holy Spirit to show me before I say it. Because if I say it wrong, I'm confusing. I definitely don't want nothing. God's not confusion. So let, let me go back up here again. Adam and Eve, when when God created Adam and Eve, He, he the, the world was perfect. No, man cannot put, we might set a tree, we might put the seed in the ground. But when the first tree was made, it was made in the garden, and that seed started there and all the way to here. All the way to here. Now, what I'm trying to get to, I know I'm probably confused, but what I'm trying to get to, that whatever was done in the Old Testament at the very beginning of, of Genesis, whether it was a tree or whether it was man, was all created there to get to the point where we're at right now. Yes. Without the very beginning, we wouldn't be born as that. Right. So, my, my thing is right now is, is what kind of generation are we living in? We're living in a generation that God chose every one of us here to be in. Every one of us is the reason we're here. And this generation is the one that when the trumpet does sound, we're going to be called out here first. Oh, yeah. We are. And, but let me say this. Let me say this. Our faith, our faith has got to get us to a point that we believe that we need to get out here and work before that horn blows. Because there's times I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, God, please let this horn blow. Have you ever been but I'm ready right now. But, and you know what Holy Spirit told me just a couple of days ago? It's not time. It's not time right now. I want, you want it, John? You want, but listen, there's one more out there that you're not reaching. There's one more out there that, that you're not reaching. There's one more out there that we're not doing what we're supposed to do. We're going to answer to God for that one person, church. We're going to answer to God. And he's going to say, I told you that one more. That one more. So we've got to believe everything that we, we just read that from the book of Genesis until the time right now, we've got to believe what we're supposed to be doing by working, reaching the lost out there. And then we've got to believe that one day when we do go to be with Jesus, that we're coming back on horses to fight that battle with him. We gotta believe that. So I, I went on the revelation to tell you that when it's finally over, we'll have a new new earth and a new heaven. And then and then it's all peace. It's all peace. So will it be worth it? Uh, if it's gonna be worth it, is it worth it to start taking care of your body? Is it worth it to start doing? Believing 
from the very beginning to, to now. I want, to share, I want to share one other thing with you. You know, I talk about faith. I cannot never talk about faith or preach about faith until I break about Peter walking on the water. I, I, I can't. But let me tell you what the Holy Spirit told me yesterday, Pastor. I, I should have told you because I'm so excited. <clears throat> I'm sitting there thinking about Peter walking on water. And Peter had to have the faith to step out of the boat. Amen? Amen. And, and we know that. And Holy Spirit just told me, I said, I, I said, and I said, Holy Spirit, I said, can I walk on water? Will I have that kind of faith to walk on? Can I get that? I want to get that faith. You know what Holy Spirit told me? It wasn't what I wanted to hear. Holy Spirit told me, said, John, you'll never walk on water. And I questioned him. I said, well, if I get the faith, Holy Spirit, I, I, I did. I said, please tell me why. He says, because Jesus told Peter to come. Amen. Jesus told Peter to come. I would have never figured that out. Heavenly Holy Spirit picture. Jesus told Peter to come. He didn't say, all you disciples come out. He didn't see Peter come out. He, he stood in the boat and said, if that's really you, Jesus, let me come walk to you. Jesus, all he does is, Jesus has come. Amen. Nobody else said come. Jesus was out there on the water. So I'll never be able to walk on water until I get to heaven. Amen. Then I want to ask Jesus, Jesus, tell me to come. Come, tell me to come. I'm serious. I mean it with all my heart. Because I've always wanted to know how it would be to have that kind of faith to walk on water. And you know, you know what the Holy Spirit told me? You've got the faith, but Jesus didn't tell me to come. So what Jesus has told me to do is take care of this temple, reach the lost people out there, and have faith that I've already healed you and step out and do what you're supposed to do there. It's the word that walk on water. Praise the Lord. I've been praising Woo! I've been so long. Good. So through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, which we just talked about, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So we got to believe everything in God's word. That he spoke everything into existence, and it was. Amen? So we believe that. Praise God. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Amen. So, let's stop there on that little part right there for just a minute. So, no matter what we do or say, if we don't have the faith that God did and spoke it into existence or anything in God's Word, if we don't believe it, it's not going to happen. Because everything is possible with God. Amen. Everything. Everything. Everything is possible with God. Somebody just got healed a while ago. And that was John. That was God. There's no, listen, I don't care what's going on in your body right now. It, it don't matter. God is the touched it and took care of it. There's nothing. He created that body. He knows every part. You know, listen. When you go take a part to have it work on, they can put a new engine in there, can't they? Well, God can sit right there right now and put a whole new engine in me. He can. He don't have to have me put it on. My goodness. He just speaks it. And I'll have it all done. I mean, that's what we need to get at. we got to get our mindset, what the Word says, and then act on it. Work on it. And be obedient and do it. Now, I, I told you, there's some right now, I really feel it, that's kind of a little aggravated because I'm not, I'm not ready to give it up. Listen, you can't give it up without God. Amen. I can't. I like it too much. But with God, there's nothing impossible. He can take this away from you, and you've got to be willing to work to keep it away from you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11, 8. I faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. Let me ask you this question. If God takes you somewhere to another country, I don't care, to another church, are you willing to step out and go? Amen. Be careful. Yeah. Right, Pastor? Be careful. I'm going to share another little testimony with you. And, and, and I, it's not about me. I just don't know who, who else to use. But I started 
like I said, at a young age at Springfield Baptist Church, I was there for 19 years. I started dating Mary, and she told me, she's, I, I'm just not comfortable in a, in a big church. She was always back, bashful and shy. She was. And she wasn't saved yet. And I told her, I said, you can ask her. I told her this word when we started dating. I said, listen, I'm going to date somebody that knows Jesus. I said, and, and, I, and she'll tell you. That's what I told her. This I said, you need to know Jesus. I'm not going to marry somebody that does not know Jesus. So it went on for a few months. And we went, she says, I said, well, I, I'm willing to leave Springfield Baptist Church and go to Temple Baptist Church, a smaller church. So that's where we went. We went to Temple Baptist Church. You know, I took us out there, put me there, Temple Baptist Church. She got saved a few months later. She did. Praise God. I mean, God was working. And so then things, we got, of course, we got married, and, and then we had three kids, and, and some things happened with family issues, and the next thing I know, I built a home before we got married, had to build, build it myself, me and my dad. But anyway, the issue was that I was about to lose my home. So I had to auction it off, and God, I didn't know what was going on. I, I prayed, I knew to pray, I knew to talk to God, and I trusted Him, but it was still difficult. When, when you, you got three little kids, you did not have a place to live. So God took me to, uh, out there, a club, Peace Grove Church. And there was a house up there and a farm that we kind of leased just to live in. I got to fix it up. I spent the time and money and didn't get nothing for it, but I got to live at the house and pay the rent on it. But anyway, we was there, and next thing you know, we decided to go to church at Peace Grove. Because, like I say, we, I was in church all my life. So we go to Beach Grove Church. I didn't know the whole thing about Beach Grove, but my dad and my granddad helped build that church. Yeah, they literally helped build it, physically. And so anyway, I was there for several years, but long story short, as we was there, a, a, a cousin of mine, he was probably my fourth cousin, was the music director there. Matter of fact, he, he had a voice that would shake this place. He, oh, he was awesome. Matter of fact, he sung with Stephen Foster, and, and, and he, he had the main part there. And he's somewhere now, I think, in maybe Indiana, singing, still singing. But anyway, he, he stepped down as the music director. So after he stepped down, I had a knock on my door, and we just started going to church. We've probably been there a month by, by now. And so I had a knock on the door, and it was a couple of church. I think it was deacons, both of them were deacons. They come in and said, John, can we talk to you? He's married. I said, yeah. And they, he come to me and said, the guy stepped down for music. Would you be willing to lead the music here? And I said, nope. <laughs> That's what I can say. I wouldn't believe no music. But let me say this as I say that. When I was 16 years old, I led a youth revival music. I led the music in the youth revival. That next week, the youth director came to me and says, John, God showed me that you would be leading music. I just looked at I was playing ball. I didn't care about leading music, you know. I didn't believe it. So, the guys getting ready to leave, they said, well, before you, I know you said no, but before you think of it, pray about it. I said, oh, yeah, I'll do that. So, the next Wednesday, no, the next Tuesday night, they come to me. Again, he said, he prayed about it. I said, yeah, I prayed about it. And I, it's just not for me. He said, well, well just do this. Lead it Wednesday night. Well, I was scared to death. Yeah, Get up early lead it Wednesday night. But this, it won't be that big crowd here. Most of it, probably about like this. I said, okay. <laughs> That's the way I said it. So I led music that Wednesday night. So they come back the next week and said, would you leave Sunday night? Okay. So I leave Sunday night. So they come back again the next week. They said, would you leave Sunday morning? Just try it. And, and this time they brought the whole choir in on me. <laughs> so here it was. And I was nervous. I was scared. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. It had to be God. So I said, yes. And I led the music. Well, I wind up leading music for 38 years. <laughs> And I'm not saying that to those don't leave whatsoever. I'm saying that because God Almighty, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, 
had a plan for me. And when I got through at Beach Grove, when God was done with me there, he put me in a new place to do mechanics. And I led music there for several years. That was kept at 38 altogether. And then he, when he got through with me, new beginnings. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, I told everybody that I will be buried in new beginnings. That's my thinking, David. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that I would live at new, I would be at new beginnings until I died or until Jesus raptured me out of there. You just didn't know he went before. That's it. That's it. So, after New Beginnings, God, and as a matter of fact, New Beginnings wanted to buy some land over here or buy a building in Lebanon to start another church for New Beginnings. God had different plans. So here we are, and I'm going to say this with all my heart. I'm hoping that this is it. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. But I, I want to say this, the pastor knows my heart. If, if Holy Spirit moves me for something else, I'll go. Amen. I have no choice. Amen. But my hopes and prayers is God leave me here. Till you rest for Saturday. Amen. Amen. But I say that for that scripture right there. Abraham had to go to a place that he didn't know nothing about. And of course, his nephew Lot, he even gave him the choice to pick first. But look what, look what Abraham picked. Look at the next scripture. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Hey. Amen. Hey. That's what Abraham wanted to do. Lot got the prettiest place and the most grass and most water. But when it come down to it, Abraham got the best. Because hey. he got what God wanted. What happened to Lot? He lost everything. Except for his kids, he lost his wife. The worst city there was, Sodom and Gomorrah. You know the story. Homosexuality was running rapid in there. And God, what did he do in the Old Testament? <laughs> kids and all. Thank God Jesus came. Hallelujah. <clears throat> By faith, Moses. Hebrews 11, 24, 25. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's dog, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Listen to me, Christians. Choose Jesus, not the sin, even though it's fun. Because every once in a while, sin is fun. But there's a day when it's all over, and it passes. It's all over. So choose what Moses did. Jesus. Choose, choose Jesus. Amen? Amen. Choose Jesus. Hebrews 11, 28 through 29. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. What did Moses do? Listen, all the blood was put over all the doors. And when that evil come. To kill all the kids, the firstborn. What did it do? It passed. It took faith of, of Moses. And how many of us would, would, if we would have been there and in the room with Moses and heard that scream, that cry of someone losing their baby? I couldn't imagine, Pastor. I couldn't imagine. But Moses had the faith to listen to what God told him to do. All I'm telling you tonight, are you listening to what Jesus is telling you to do? What he done then? Amen. Are you listening? By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. I thought about you Sunday when you had the cane and you held it up. When Moses held the staff up, the waters parted and it wasn't no little creek. Some people say this little creek was dry anyway. It was not. When he parted the sea, it said sea. He parted the sea. The last time I seen the sea, it was big. It was big. And when he walked on it, it was dry land. How come that happened? Because Moses had the faith. He done the work that God called him to. Did he mess up? Yes. Pastor mentioned the other day. He struck that rock because of his anger. 
and it cost him. But he still got to see it. He just couldn't go in. But he got to see it. Because you know why? Because God loved Moses. And Jesus loves you. So be willing to do what Jesus told you to do, church. Be willing to do it. Everybody stand up. This is my last scripture tonight. It's the best one of the whole thing. John 15, 5. It says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you. Stop for just a minute. If you remain in me, is there a choice that we can yes. not remain in you? Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, girl. I appreciate it. Listen to me. If you remain in me, we got free will, Pastor. Yes. And Sister Tristan said it. Amen. We can choose to go out and still let him in. Yes. Are we going to do that? No. Huh? No. I got three no's. Are we going to do that? No. Praise God. You will bear much fruit. Apart from me, I love this, apart from me, apart from Jesus, apart from the Holy Spirit, apart from God, you can do nothing. Nothing. You can do nothing. So my question tonight is, we get ready to close, my question tonight, are you willing are you willing to give up what's not right in your body right now? Are you willing to give up the pleasure that's going on that you enjoy? Listen, you're not going to lose your salvation. Don't think y'all, I'm going to be up front with you. You won't lose your salvation. But you are destroying the temple that carries the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Let's go, Lord. Pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for everything you've done for us and given us. I thank you so much, Lord, for just touching us like you have. I thank you so much, Lord, for just letting the Holy Spirit just flow through this whole church tonight, Lord. Not because of me, but because of you, Jesus. So I'm praying right now, Lord. I'm praying right now that you touch hearts. Lord, I pray right now that each and every one of us will be down here willing to give up something that's not right in our bodies right now, that we're not doing right. Whatever it is, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, you show every person, if everybody in this church right now wants a healing, if everybody in this person right now wants to do what Jesus is calling them to do, and they're willing to do it, then I pray they come right now and they get on their knees and they lay it at the foot of the cross, not to take it back. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.